And especially the freedom to fail. Who? Who? Him? Who? Him? Who? Him? Him? Who? Me? How Bill Gates made $128 billion. As the fourth wealthiest person in the world, Bill Gates must have a pretty unique story in how he became the person he is right now. As for the moment, his estimated net worth is $128 billion. We all know about him, but we don't know is the process of getting the success formula that he has followed through his life to acquire this position. So let's see how Bill Gates made $128 billion. Bill Gates was born in Seattle, Washington on the 28th of October, 1955. His father is William H. Gates Sr. and his mother is Mary Maxwell Gates. He has one older sister, Christy Gates, and one younger sister, Libby Gates. At the age of 13, he enrolled in Lakeside School, a private preparatory school. While at that school, he took an interest in programming the General Electric System in BASIC and was excused from classes to pursue his interest. He built his first computer program on the General Electric machine. Gates met Paul Allen at the school, and they worked together to find bugs in the PDP-10 system belonging to Computer Center Corporation. Gates, Paul, and two other students wrote a payroll program for information sciences in exchange for computer time and royalties. After that, it leads on to his school becoming fully aware of his programming skills. He created a program to schedule students in classes. At the age of 17, he and Paul started a venture called Traf O Data to make traffic counters based on Intel 8008 processors. Gates graduated from Lakeside School in 1973 and was a National Merit Scholar. He scored 1,590 out of 1,600 on the SAT. He enrolled at Harvard College in the autumn of 1973, where he met Steve Ballmere. Gates did not have a study plan at Harvard, but spent a lot of time using the computers. In 1974, he joined Paul Allen at Honeywell. In 1975, the MITS Altair 8800, based on Intel's 880 CPU, was released. Bill and Paul saw this opportunity to start their own software company. And here we have the starting point of the Microsoft story. In 1975, Gates read an article in the January of Popular Electronics that demonstrated the Altair 8800. Gates contacted MITS, the creators of the new microchip, to inform them that he and others were working on a basic interpreter for the platform. Bill Gates and Paul Allen didn't have any written code. They wanted to gauge the interest of MITS. They met with the MIT president and developed an Altair emulator within a few weeks to demonstrate on a mini computer, and then the basic interpreter. The demonstration was a success, which led to a deal with MITS to distribute the interpreter as Altair Basic. Paul Allen was hired in MITS, and Gates took a leave of absence from Harvard to work with Allen in November 1975. They named their partnership Microsoft. A year later, the hyphen was dropped. And on the 26th of November, 1976, the trade name Microsoft was registered. IBM approached Microsoft to write a basic interpreter for the new IBM PC. Gates referred them to digital research as they required an operating system, but the discussions did not go well. So IBM representatives spoke with Gates around the discussions, and he proposed using 86DOS, owned by SCP, an operating system similar to hardware similar to the PC. Microsoft made a deal with SCP to become an exclusive licensing agent, and later the full owner of 86DOS. After adapting the operating system for the PC, Microsoft delivered it to IBM as PC DOS in exchange for a one-time fee of $50,000. The sales of MS DOS made Microsoft a major player in the industry. Despite IBM's name on the operating system on the operating system, the press quickly identified Microsoft as being very influential on the new computer. The computer was called by an expert in the industry as a Gates computer. The company was reconstructed on the 25th of June, 1981. Gates became the president and board chairman. Microsoft launched its first retail version of Microsoft Windows on the 20th of November, 1985, and struck a deal with IBM to develop a separate operating system called OS2. IBM and Microsoft developed the first version of the new system successfully, but their partnership deteriorated due to creative differences. And Microsoft has definitely been growing ever since. The software and hardware products have been expanding from Windows OS, Microsoft Office Suites, Office 365, Xbox, Bing, Hotmail, and the huge list goes on. It all began with the first idea, and then they built upon that. But what's the best and most logical part here? He chose a great business partner. He knew who was the right person to start his super amazing plans with. Though he gained billions of dollars through Microsoft since leaving his CEO position in 2000, Gates has continued to grow his wealth through investing. In fact, his net worth has nearly doubled over the past 20 years, from 60 billion in 2000 to almost 130 billion in 2021. He once said, to win big, you sometimes need to take big risks. In the Forbes interview, Gates' father said his son was an incredibly avid reader as a child. Just about every kind of book interested him. Encyclopedias, science fiction, you name it. I was thrilled that my child was such an avid reader, but he reads so much that Bill's mother and I had to institute a rule, no books at the dinner table, he said. Gates has maintained his love of reading throughout his life, 
He even has his own blog where he frequently recommends books to his readers. Reading likely contributed to Gates' net worth as it helped provide him with the knowledge he would need to become a successful entrepreneur. Do you know what makes him even wiser? He learned from his mistakes with Microsoft. Surely everyone makes mistakes, and Gates was no exception. The key, however, is to learn from those mistakes, and that's exactly what Gates does till today. If you mess up, it's not your parents' fault, so don't whine about your mistakes. Learn from them. Bill Gates. In a 2008 BBC interview in which he talked about how Microsoft was able to beat competitors, Gates said, our products were successful enough that even when we did make a mistake, when we hired the wrong person or organized things the wrong way, we were frank enough with ourselves to say, oops, this isn't working. And yet, my conservative balance sheet approach meant that all the mistakes we've made, we had a chance to learn from them and do different things. Gates actually revealed the biggest secret you can do to be successful. After all, we all want to hear these little tips and tricks from people like him, don't we? Well, Gates has a slew of tips for anyone interested in following in his footsteps. Among them, there's one that may be the simplest, yet most effective, according to Gates. While we may not all take part in his routines, he suggests breaking our days into 5-minute intervals. Actually, even Elon Musk does the same thing. To recreate the task in your own life, spend a few minutes each carefully planning the next day into 5-minute blocks to boost productivity. It may seem tedious at first, but you'll lose less time in the grand scheme because the day has already been thoroughly planned out. Gates might spend 5 minutes reading headlines. 5 minutes returning emails, then 5 minutes on the phone, and so on. That's the single best piece of advice. Constantly think about how you could be doing things better and questioning yourself, Elon Musk said. When your day is fully accounted for, there's less chance you'll deviate and waste time. Gates also recommends carrying a small notebook to jot down ideas as they come. He keeps a solid routine intact. Incremental knowledge is so much easier to maintain in a rich way. At first, it's very daunting, but then as you get the kind of scope, then all these pieces fit in, he says. He even mentioned that understanding the concept of something or the background information helps to learn the core information easier, and that reading is fundamental to success. And he says, you don't really start getting old until you stop learning. Do you know what else we can learn from this experience? To start as early as possible. Gates was only 13 years old when he started working with computers. Actually, when you start something at an early point in your life, you become molded around it. Not only will you have a chance of becoming successful sooner than most people, but you would also be less likely to give it up. By the time you're an adult and people actually start to take more notice of what you're working towards, you'll be stubborn enough to just ignore them. Gates is also known for his charitable work, giving nearly $50 billion away over the past 25 years, typically to organizations that support healthcare, poverty, and public education. At the core of our foundation's work is the idea that every person deserves the chance to live a healthy and productive life. Since 1994, Bill and his wife, Melinda Gates, has given away more than $45 billion to charitable causes, primarily through the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. The Giving Pledge was founded in 2010, and 40 of the world's wealthiest people committed to giving away a majority of their wealth during their lifetime. Today, more than 200 of the world's wealthiest individuals and families have joined that pledge. Is this story inspirational for you? Let us know in the comments down below! Make sure you subscribe to our channel and turn on your post notifications so you never miss a video from us. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up! See you in the next video! Thanks for watching!